Hey everybody, it's Aquila and this is a Lefty Knitter podcast. I'm doing another demo here on my Earlwacker Speedster. This is a 48 stitch cylinder. I've gotten the question before about the cylinders. So let's talk about the cylinders really quick. The 48 is means that there's 48 needles. You can get cylinders that have, I have a 64, I have a 72, there's a 60, I believe there's a 50 something, there's like an eight, like it goes up higher. So the lower, the cylinders are all the same size, circumference wise. So the only thing that changes is the amount of needles that go into your cylinder. So this is a 48 and then this is a 64. So you can kind of see how big the slots are on the 48 and then how closer, how much closer together they are on a 64. That is the difference. Just so, um, I know that's a question I get asked quite often is, is the cylinder size different? No, the cylinder circumference does not change. It is the same for every cylinder. So I just wanted to uh, say that because I, that is one question I get quite often. So the last demo I tried showing you guys was with this sport weight sock yarn or sport weight yarn. This is from Avalon Springs Farm. I made a t tank top for Hazel out of this and I had some left over. So I was attempting to make her a sock. So when I put it on the last time, it seemed like it was fine. Everything was running smoothly, but I didn't like the fabric it was creating. Now, 48 is definitely probably more for a DK weight, even a light worsted. So I got a tension I liked to make. So I've now cranked the first sock. So now I can show you guys the second sock. I got a decent fabric this second time, but when I was doing the heels and the toe, it got really tight to crank. So I'm going to still do this because I'm going to make the second sock, but I'm going to show you guys the difference uh, in what it does. Also, I did a different heel that I've never done before. Not really a fan. There's like a huge gap there. It's not the normal heel that I do. So, but I want to, I want to show you guys all different um, techniques. So yeah. So, and I'm going to do a Pico edge on this and let's get started. So Again, I'm trying to do videos for both um, newbies and people who are maybe more advanced. Uh, this is your setup bonnet and put this on my machine. So I did learn how to do timestamps on YouTube. So I'm going to try to put timestamps on all my videos from now on. And because um, I really don't want to fast forward through... Um, the videos. I don't want to fast forward through the videos. I want to show you guys like everything. So I'm going to crank forward a little. I always try to start and stop on needle one, which if the cylinder's marked like a clock, this is three o'clock, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. I always try to start after my half mark here on, um, the right hand side. Some people say right and left. I try to use the clock face numbers. I'm putting my buckle on right now. And I am home so family does make noise. Alright, so I'm gonna put some waste yarn on first. I, I save all my little balls of waste yarn. I know I don't have the right camera set up to show like the mast and um, like threading the mast, the yarn mast. So maybe that will be another video that I just show that. I don't know. Also, again, I'm always up for suggestions. There's always, um, other people who have videos on all these things. I just feel like sometimes you learn better from one person versus another. So I'm going to continue to keep putting out videos until I feel like I can't put out anymore. <laughs> The yarn is caught somewhere and see how it's even my waist yarn doesn't want to fully go down into the bed of this so I feel like my tension is just a little too tight I didn't mess with my tension but I feel like even just this waist yarn like I haven't touched it since I cranked the other 
the matching sock to this. So I just want to be clear about all that. I wouldn't ever fool you guys and be like, oh yeah, that worked for me, and then change it all up on you. So Alright, so I use fishing line for my ripcord. I had taken some of my supplies on a demo, so my ripcords are all mixed up. I gotta separate these out a little. So the ripcord just makes it so my waste yarn comes off of my project yarn easier, in case you're wondering. Some, some people don't use it and they just cut their waste yarn, but then you can't really reuse your waste yarn. All right, so I don't want to overlap, so I'm starting on needle one. I'm going to go around all the way to the last needle closes, and that's where I'll put my project yarn in. I did make notes on this sock, so I'm going to follow my notes so I have a matching sock, obviously. You always want to, you know, have a semi-matching sock. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's put my project yarn in and we'll get going. So I have a th I have a um, slotted yarn carrier, which I really, I love my slotted yarn carrier. Some people don't have them and that's fine. Totally up to you what you wanna have. I did one round, I'm gonna just hold these tails. I'm going to do 15 rows, and then I'll do the pico. Alright, so to do a pico, you're just transferring one stitch to its neighbor. So every stitch goes to its neighbor stitch. I lift the weights a little with my legs, so it's not a ton of tension on the yarn. There's a spring that's in this, there's a groove here on this cylinder, if you can see it. There's a spring in here that holds all your needles in tight. You, you quite possibly could have to, you could break your spring, you can, your spring can get loose. Um, so you might have to replace it. They, now Erlbacher does send a, re a replacement spring and then they sell replacement springs. You don't want to um, not have any tension on it because then you could drop your stitches. So what I do is I just pull it out a little with my finger to get the stitch with my tool and transfer it. I'm pulling it out and it pulls out the spring. Maybe when we get to the front, you'll actually be able to see that. I should switch to the other end of my tool try not to get my hands in the videos it's really hard to not have hands in videos if i had a different camera setup possibly where i had an overhead cam or something else maybe i could have two different angles but now i only can do half because once i get around here these needles are going to be down in the bed down in the cylinder and you can't do anything with those stitches. You have to crank forward. So it's best to crank, you know, do half. I've done my half. Now I'm gonna crank around to the opposite side so I can do my other half. I've let my weight get go with my legs because you want the tension on the project or you'll just drop stitches. All right, so that's about half. And now we will keep going. This one went to this one and this one is gonna go to this one. So you can see this spring here. Maybe you'll be able to see it when I pull this stitch out. And you might be able to see it even better when I come to the front. This actually takes a decent amount of time and then hanging the pico, hanging your hung hem, that can uh, uh, take more time also. 
than actually cranking the sock. So, try to get my hand out of the way so you can see, see that spring that comes out? That's what's holding the tension on your needles so they don't come out of the cylinder. My cat has decided to stay down here. I'm surprised she is not trying to be in the picture. So. And then, I apologize if you heard my daughter down here. She always has to come down and make some sort of noise. She wanted to get on the elliptical for whatever reason. All right, and last one here. Also, while I'm talking, I probably go slower than if I was just sitting here concentrating. So, it makes a difference. Alright, so, now we're going to do all the way to 30, because you want to have 15 rows on the opposite side. So, your pico will be at the top of your sock. Stop at the front because I want to start hanging my first stitch here. It's easy to identify the first and last stitch when you start and stop in the same place. I'm taking my weight and my buckle off. This is where my hands usually get in the way because I'm trying to hold up the fabric for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. All right, so if you fold the fabric up in half, Now you always have to be careful if your stitches are a little loose you have to be careful on this side where they could possibly pop off see how it looks like it could just want to pop off right there all right so i'm going to find my first stitch right there and hang it on my first needle now you can tighten that up it'll be fine I never pull it tight like that. I always do that after the, it's off the machine when I just, because that's your only end you have to weave in. So. You always want to use a, if you have um, a good contrasting color, like if I would have used, say, this orange versus the pink, I would have had a really good contrast for you guys to see even better between um, my working yarn and my waist yarn. Also, uh, the fishing line helps me see the stitch I'm pulling up because it's it's the U stitch that goes like this, or it it looks like it goes this way and this goes this way. It's really not. They're both kind of going in the same direction because these are the downs. These are the, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong about that. Sorry. I'm just making stuff up as I go. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's just easier to see sometimes when you have a good, con a better contrast. I don't have the best contrast here. They do sell different colors of fishing line. This fishing line is actually like a neon yellow, but I've used it so many times. Because again, I reuse it multiple times. But they have other colors. I've thought about maybe buying another color. So I have a more contrast. So I've done half. You have to put your buckle back on and your weights back on. Now when you do this, there's going to be this extra fabric here that's not getting tension because the tension is being pulled in here. So you have to kind of tension it down and crank forward to about half. Now I just kind of lift it again with my legs. You might be able to see that I'm holding it with my legs down there. I don't know. You just go, go all the way around. Again, I get nervous making videos. I don't want to mess up. Although, you guys really... I Thank you for being so supportive. And I posted... 
yesterday the video of this sock where I failed, you know, it wasn't a fail learning experience. I didn't do a swatch. I should have done a swatch, but I didn't. I, um, I just always figure I can restart it. I can take it out and, and do it over. So this is where it's harder to find this last stitch, but here's the fishing line and here's where it's come. It's going through this right here. That's my last stitch. Now I want to let it hang. So the tension is on it. I'm going to reset my counter because I'm going to do 40 rows for the leg. And then I'm going to do a brand new heel. Stopping in the front, and I'm going to do, this is called the Fast and Easy Heel by Deb Oswald. She has a video I will link. Um, it's actually, I think, an Earlbacker video. I'm going to link it, though, in the description. It's also one of the heels that comes in the Earlbacker manual for you to learn. So I'm going to show you this heel because it's the heel I did on this one. That way they kind of stay um, consecutive. I, I uh, the same, not that it matters, my child would not know the difference between the heels. So I have it written down right here because I don't do this one very often, so I need to reference something. So you raise all your needles on the back half of the cylinder. Okay, it is cleared. Sometimes the needle butt doesn't always clear if I don't crank it forward enough. So I now have half the cylinder, half the needles raised. These are now out of work and they will not knit. So to do this heel, you crank to the back and then you're going to put your heel spring on, which I'll have to do a demo on showing you guys the, the mast stuff. So you're going to raise one needle on the yarn side and crank. So everything you do on one side, you mirror it on the other side. So I'm going to raise one on this side and I'm going to crank to the other side. You can see that my needles are already raising up because the tension on this, like I said, to get the fabric I wanted for this sport weight yarn, it was uh, not cooperating. So I have to put my heel forks in a lot quicker because see how those needles are not going down? They will just drop off if I don't put um, some tension on it. So let's do that right now. Also, I had to hand tension this a lot. I'm not going to lie. I had to hand tension it quite a bit. So the man, the manual tells you the best place is one inch down and three needles in. And there you go. So we're going to continue doing raise one on the yarn side where the yarn's coming from and crank around. And I'm going to just keep hand tensioning the front weight because like I said, um, it's just, it's a really, it's making a really tight fabric and with the 10, the heel spring on and everything it's making it even extra tight so one up crank around until you get to your target needle I've you can barely see that my target needle is marked here with blue at this point, I'm going to move my weights a little just so they're more accurate because these are under needles that aren't working anymore. Okay. Um, some people use their fingers. Uh, I know some videos you'll see people using the pick to raise up their needle. So you can do that too if you have really sensitive fingers. It's up to you on how you want to do this. So we are at the target needle so once you get to the target and crank you're going to lower one needle on the opposite side uh lower one needle on opposite side yeah so i want to um do the last needle though because i want a mirror so i'm going to lift and crank and now when you increase again 
you're going to lower on the opposite side of the yarn. So I'm going to lower just one needle on the opposite side to increase one stitch every time. So one, one. Again, I didn't like this heel. I felt it made it too holy. The, the, there was too many gaps on the side. I just didn't like it. Again, um, it's called the fast and easy heel. If I didn't have so much tension going on, I could probably do this very fast because technically I'm just moving one needle. When I do my other decrease that I like, it's one up, two down. <laughs> so you're, you're doing a lot more work. All right, let's move my weights again. And one on the opposite side of your yarn, where your yarn is coming from. See how it's barely even pulling that down? I just give it a good shove with my fingernail. I don't know what's catching me on that side, but it keeps uh, wanting to catch over there. All right, I am going to move my weights again. I had to move them a lot the last time also. It just, it was not cooperating with this tension and this yarn. But I'm gonna finish this project and it's gonna be fine. All right, so let me read, it says, when yarn is on the left and you have one needle on the left, crank to front and lower all. All right, let me see if I can, okay. So these would be my last two stitches. So I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna decrease one. And then I'm gonna decrease on this side, crank to the front and then lower all my stitches. And this is where I feel like you get a gap, but again, Everybody can do different heels and I might be getting a weird gap because of the fabric and the tension I'm getting. So it's not always the type of, it's not the type of heel. It could just be um, the yarn and the tension and all the factors. There's a lot of factors. So I'm gonna lower all my needles, all my latches are open and I'm going to crank around and we'll take my heel spring off Wow, my family is really loud. And I need to reset my counter, but that was one row. And I'm gonna do 48 for her sock. These are, there we go. Just until I do a row or two, I think. I'm gonna give it tension. Yep, I should be good now. So 48 for the foot, and then we're gonna we're gonna get through that toe. I promise you. <laughs> I um, had to look at the book, I think, for the toe. So I'll have to pull that out so I can see the fast and easy toe. I'm gonna actually remove these weights real quick move my big weight up because I'm almost hitting the ground. If it hits the ground, you get no tension. So just remember that. I think that'll hold it enough. Let's see. All right, I'm at 48, so let me reference this guide again real quick, what it says for fast and easy toe. The toe is the same as the heel until you get to the last row. So let's do the heel again the same way, except the last row, and then I'll get the book back out. We're gonna raise all of our needles. Now on our, all the back needles, when you do a toe you don't want to ever do a deep toe you can do deep heels which means you use um you're taking less needles out of work um i'll eventually show you guys a deep heel but for now we're gonna do this so we're gonna crank to the back put our heel spring on 
or toe spring. And it's one needle on the yarn side and crank around. One. Let's put our weights on just because I know it raises a lot. Oh my God, my family is so loud. If you guys can hear them again, I have to do stuff when people are home. I can't just kick them out. I can't make them be quiet. They're upstairs having fun. So, all right, one needle lifted to decrease on the yarn side. One up. One up, crank. Okay, they got awfully loud. I had to pause there. Lift and crank. Lift and crank. Let's move these weights. And crank, lift, crank, lift, crank. And all you're doing is decreasing one stitch every pass. Now this is my target needle. Lift that and crank. Now we're gonna put on the opposite side of where the yarn is coming from. We're gonna increase one stitch every pass. Push down and crank. I struggled through this and I'm struggling through this one. So the first one, I mean, it's okay though. down. I'm going to move my weights a little. Okay. Opposite side of the yarn. Down. I always try to move my weights before I move my needle so I don't forget what I was doing. I've learned to read my stitches on this a little bit, but still sometimes it trips me up. Down on the opposite side. Down on the opposite side. Down on the opposite side. And now I'm getting back to those. I have, I'm going to have one stitch left, so I want to reference the book because I said I, this is not the standard heel I do so I don't remember how to do it. Crank. Let's see what the manual says. Okay. Lower the target needle and crank. Oh, did that already. Okay. Continue lowering the first and non-working needle on the opposite side of the yarn carrier until there is one needle standing in front of the half marks on both sides. This one and this one. Lower both needles and wrap the yarn behind the needle on the right. Crank that row. Okay, so. It said lower the needle. Wait. Lower both needles and wrap the yarn behind the needle on the right. Okay, so instead of it going in front of the needle, it's going to go behind it. Okay, so we wrapped it behind and then we cranked this side and that's how I would normally uh, do the tail. So, yeah. There's a right side the thread the waist yarn. Yep, that's the same way that I close up my toes on the other method. So I lowered, I wrapped, and I lowered, and now it's on that side. Half the needles on both sides have been worked, and this is where you 
leave a long tail, you take it off your machine, you pull it to the inside like that. You're going to get waste yarn, put it in your machine. You're going to, you can bring this around, not too far, because you don't want to work that needle. So thread your yarn carrier. I put my heel spring on for the first row for the beginning. I'm going to hold the tails tight, make sure it catches, crank to the front, lower all my needles, making sure all the latches are open. Again, you don't want to push your needles down super far. They can be standing up some. Like, you can tell these are going to be higher than these. This one's higher. But you don't want to smush it down or else you're going to close your latch and then you won't. You'll drop your stitch. So, I'm going to crank around. Being careful here. I'm going to take my heel spring off now. Slowly keep going. That missed a stitch, so we're going to fix that. I missed a bunch of stitches because the tension. We're going to fix that. I'm going to show you right now. So I didn't knit these stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit them manually, meaning I'm going to put my hook under. I'm going to grab the last stitch, and I'm going to pull it over the needle. Hopefully my hand wasn't in the way. Grab the last stitch. I'm pulling it. I didn't get it all, but it should be okay. We should be all right. Pull it out. Grab the last stitch. Manually. I know it's a whole row. That's kind of scary. I have a lot of weight on my machines pulling the tension down. Just going to keep going. Under the yarn. Grab the stitch, pull it over, under the yarn, grab that whole stitch, pull it over. You've now made, you've knit that stitch by hand. I apologize that that happened, but it happens and it can be fixed. I don't have to, I don't have to scrap this whole project because of that. Last one gets a little tricky because you don't have as much play here. I've re-knit them all. That's because my tension has been so funky with this machine. I mean, with this yarn and this tension. So, go slow and it knit all the stitches. Well, there's always going to be things that happen that I get to show you, that I might not know I'm going to get to show you, and there was one. Come on, get out of there. Waste yarn. Since I reuse my waste yarn, it's not flowing off a cone, so sometimes I have to manipulate it. All right, and then when you get to the end, you don't want to just keep cranking. You want to, I always pull my tail in. You don't have to. You could keep cranking, but you want to hold the weights or they will just drop to the ground. So let's hold the weight. Take it off the machine. Let's take these weights off and show you the finished object. Those are a pound each. This guy here is um, five pounds just so you know how much weight is uh, pulling down on that when I was doing the demos I would hand people the weight and they would be kind of shocked at how heavy that was all right so there's my fishing line I go to the opposite side of where my two ends are approximately I get the fishing line I kind of give it a little tug the end out. It comes off 
you can reuse the waste yarn. You have to just weave this end in. Pico hung hem, leg, heel. Let me show you guys the heel a little bit. Heel, foot, and you'll close the toe with a Kitchener stitch. All right, now I have a pair. Thanks guys for sticking with me through um, the fail and the learning experience. These look very different in size, so I'm not sure what's going on. Nope, they're fine. Looks taller. I may have done more rows. My kid's not going to know the difference. All right. Well, thanks again. And always appreciate comments, criticisms, <laughs> questions that you might have, or suggestions for more videos. So, all right. Until the next video, guys. Happy knitting. Happy crafting and happy cranking. Bye.